Um, thanks, Dr. Stoll. Thank you everybody for being here this afternoon. Uh, like you said, I am a part of this uh, bigger team, this collaborative effort, working closely with Varma for the last couple of years, though this is the first time I've like been in the same room with him and we work on the same campus, um, you know, virtual and everything. Um, but yeah, so I am doing the economic analysis for the decision support tool. And so today I'm just going to talk to you about kind of what that looks like evaluating the costs and benefits of these different manure management systems that we're looking at. I think everybody's had to learn how to advance slides today and that's how we do it. Okay, so um, I wanna start off just by thanking everybody involved. Um, obviously I couldn't do my part without the help from everybody from our uh, funding uh, source, USDA, NEFA, our external reviewers who have helped a lot in the past few months with sort of some preliminary um, input on our tool, um, vendor contributions with a lot of valuable information um, on the economic side as well as the environmental side, and then all of the contributing authors on this project, including um, my major advisor, uh, Dr. Jenny Pop. I'm a PhD student at the University of Arkansas. Okay, so starting with what the economic model does, uh, where we've spent a lot of time trying to build these models and databases on different you know, components of these manure management systems from equipment, construction, labor, energy, supplies, and a lot of other things. Uh, one thing I'll say is that um, I am also kind of new to the economic field. Um, I have a background in water quality and land use. So uh, a lot of the, well, not, not a lot. Um, some of the models that I've experienced are just linear models, you know, pretty simple to work with, um, but I learned very quickly that's not how economics works. Um, so what I've really tried to do in this data collection is understand economies of scale and really be able to address those in this model. Um, because of course, you know, if, if um, I'm applying a model to a, a smaller farm, that's not gonna, it's not really gonna be relevant for a larger farm. We're gonna see those economies of scale. Also, I wanna um, really stress that uh, I'll, I'll report some preliminary results later. All of, the, all of these economic analysis results are really meant to be relative comparison. So I'm not saying the system is going to cost this much or you know, get you revenues of this much. I'm, we're really trying to just uh, show a comparison like Barma talked about um, when, we're, when the tool can recommend alternatives, uh, they're really just comparing you know, across those alternatives. So keep that in mind. Um, also, I mean, hats off to Varma for all of his work because um, all, all, like all the work that he's doing or a lot of the work that he's doing, his engineering outputs, so his output information feeds my um, inputs to the economic model. So without the stuff Varma's doing, I would just like walk away probably. Um, so thank you, Varma. Okay, so then um, we kind of all these different models and databases um, really address these different uh, manure management uh, processes from collection, treatment, storage, and land application. Uh, and then ultimately the economic outcomes, very simple you know, connection here, but there's huge spreadsheets that go into this. Uh, so those economic outcomes include annualized capital costs, annual operational costs, cost savings, the fertilizer value of the manure nutrients used on farm, revenues, which could be from uh, the sale of excess manure product or energy, and then also the net costs and net benefits. Um, ultimately, these economic results will feed into the decision algorithm that Varma spent a lot of time talking about. Um, so those economics will go into this uh, tool along with the environmental and technical uh, information as well to provide some uh, recommended alternatives to um, the farmer using the tool. Okay, so we've evaluated capital costs for you know, different processes, scrape system, flush system, uh, sand recovery, mechanical, solid, uh, liquid separation, anaerobic digestion, storage and treatment ponds or lagoons, and then also the land application activities. And so the way we've, uh, kind of annualize these capital costs is through a capital recovery value. 
And so that uh, accounts for the purchase price, the expected lifetime of the equipment or um, uh, things like that, the interest, salvage, and then financing, which right now is just set at an assumed 80%. Uh, so that gives us that um, annualized capital cost. Operational costs would include things like bedding, of course, water, insurance, uh, repair and maintenance, electricity, fuel, and labor. Cost savings would be uh, things like recycled bedding, sand or organic bedding, uh, recycled water, and um, electricity generated that would then be used um, on the farm. And then for the fertilizer value, uh, this is really a function of the manure nutrient content, the fertilizer nutrient needs um, on the field, how many acres are available um, for manure application. And then one other thing I didn't list here is, you know, is a farmer needing to apply for nitrogen or phosphorus? So these can all have quite an impact on, you know, how much manure you can apply on an acre of land and then also sort of, um, you know, how much of each nutrient NRP is actually needed and that would actually get the value, um, the economic value. Revenues, like I said, it could, it could be either from excess manure product like compost or even just solids, uh, separated solids, um, and also energy generated, uh, whether it's um, electricity sold to the grid or natural gas um, integrated into the pipeline. And then our net costs or net benefits would just be your total benefits minus your total costs. And so again, all of that kind of goes into the decision algorithm. Um, Varma mentioned the sensitivity analysis. I just wanted to touch on this very quickly. Uh, we really wanted to do this. We have lots of different variables in our tool. We don't wanna ask the farmer to sit there for hours on end, you know, populating information. So. We do the sensitivity analysis to identify some of those parameters that are going to most strongly uh, impact the economic outcomes. And then that's kind of the parameters that we can focus on for user inputs. This may look kind of complex. Uh, really, I just wanted to add some color here, uh, but this also just shows we've got labor on the x-axis, operational costs on the left figure, and net benefits on the right. So. Um, this is a pretty simple example because I didn't want to go into a lot of detail, but just to show that uh, we are kind of doing our work to identify some of those things that impact the economics. It's not surprising that the cost of labor is going to impact your operational costs and ultimately your net um, benefits of, a, of operating a manure management system. Okay, so the whole, the ultimate goal of all these analyses is to help the farmer um, kind of guide the farmer and inform them about what some of their uh, alternative systems can be to meet different goals or their constraints, their different priorities. So on our user input that we're still building out, um, we'll have a mechanism to identify what those are. So like if the farmer wants to reduce the costs associated with land application, there may be you know, certain manure management techniques that will help them achieve that. They may have a limited land base for that manure application. Um, they may say that lowering their operational costs are the most important thing to them. And so the tool can kind of take this information um, and that would, that would kind of be integrated into the decision algorithm uh, to produce these recommended alternatives. I know I'm a little bit short on time. We'll look at a quick example um, first, for some user inputs, this is just a small snippet of the inputs um, that, that we'll end up asking. Um, obviously, we need to know the number of animals for this tool to run. Uh, the acres available for application of manure can have a big influence on sort of revenue or, um, you know, the fate of those nutrients. Uh, I've listed the fertilizer N and P needs here. And then again, that Manure value for on-farm use is the nutrient value uh, that the crops actually need. Uh, and then we'll also have some questions that helps to identify the farmer's current manure management system. Uh, so that can be like the base scenario, because again, we want the farmer to be able to make comparisons across you know, what their current system is, and then they know what their goals and, and things are 
And, and so they can compare those recommended alternatives with their, what, what we'll call the base case or the base scenario. So in this example, pretty simple. Um, we're looking at a freestall barn with flush um, manure, sand bedding. We've got a sand lane um, where that sand is separated and dried on a storage slab and then reused for bedding. And uh, the manure and liquids go into a storage pond with flush water recycling and then uh, um, land application of that effluent periodically throughout the year. And so these are the results that the user would see. Um, this table of results, I've included the capital outlay. So that's kind of the initial investment costs. And all of these are in like dollars per animal. Um, that one's dollars per animal. The annual costs and benefits would be dollars per animal per year. Uh, but basically what we see is um, the estimated outlay is about $2,200. We see those uh, annualized capital costs are about 114. Uh, operational costs are 229. And then we see those benefits, the fertilizer value of $38 per animal per year, $80 worth of cost savings, $0 in revenue. Um, that can change, you know, a lot of what we've heard during this conference is uh, farmers may be land limited, or maybe they just want to understand, uh, you know, byproduct revenue generation potential. So in this example, they had enough land to apply all the manure nutrients, but suppose they didn't, or suppose they identified in the user input that, you know, I want to be able to sell this to, you know, my neighbor or whoever, uh, that could be a good uh, source of revenues that would show up here. And then your net costs are uh, $225. Should have done this a minute ago, but to orient um, red values in parentheses are costs. So kind of negative numbers, if you think about it that way, or costs, if you think about it that way. Um, and the black values are positive. So those would be benefits. For sake of time, I won't run through this. It's basically the same thing as that, the previous example. Just this one includes a organic um, bedding and solid liquid separation. And I'll just move to the comparison. So again, ultimately we want this tool to show the farmer comparisons across, you know, the different scenarios that they, that they may be able to consider. And so here we've got, um, all those same economic results. And you can just see looking at looking in that red box. Um, cause those are the two examples that that I wanted to share in this presentation, although we will, um, the tool will provide, right now we've got uh, four alternatives in addition to that base case. Um, but basically you can see here, uh, you know, if somebody was really interested in lowering their operational costs, um, that alternative may be a good approach to consider. Uh, there are trade-offs, you know, there are trade-offs with economics um, and in the bigger scope of this tool, there are trade-offs with environmental um, outcomes. But in this case, the trade-off would be, well, you can spend less on operational costs each year, um, but you're going to spend more capital. Um, but ultimately, your net costs will be reduced, you know, if you consider this alternative. So your net costs were 225 in that base case and uh, 197 in that first alternative. Um, so that would be, you know, a good, you know, a good change to your system, assuming all your other, you know, criteria um, kind of matched, you know, what this is saying. Uh, in the tool, just wanted to show um, a visual aid as well. So along with those tables of results, you'll see um, graphics as well. So just to kind of, package all that up because I know it's a lot. Um, it was really hard to get this down to 20 minutes or less, um, but we've spent a lot of time developing these economic models and databases um, to capture those economies of scale um, and evaluate these different scenarios uh, with the ultimate goal to integrate the economic outcomes into the decision support tool and really just to help farmers understand um, what their options are um, and, and compare the economic impacts to, to those different options and those alternatives. Uh, we do have a demonstration um, going on tomorrow morning, bright and early, 8 o'clock to 
It's in the Bald Eagle room. You can also um, attend that via Zoom. And we really just want to, um, like Dr. Greenlee said at the beginning of this session, uh, this is kind of a beta test. We've gone through it a little bit preliminarily over the last few months, but this is like, you know, we're ready to put it out there and really engage um, stakeholders and, and seek input and feedback on this. Um, the Zoom link is there, but I feel like I'm going to go here just to touch home plate. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you, and I'll take any questions. So I'm not sure if this is a question for you or for Burma, um, but I'm, I'm interested to know if you guys have heard feedback from farmers on kind of running through this decision tool. Because it's like just the way that it's been pre presented so far, you know, and putting my farmer hat on, I can see farmers kind of struggling with the how do I prioritize things? It's like maybe I really care about the environment, but I've got like some hard constraints that would lead me to say, well, cost is the most important because I absolutely can't spend more than this. But within this you know, open space that I got, here's, you know, here's my priorities. Is the tool able to kind of capture that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, to kind of the, your general question, uh, so far we've worked a lot internally to kind of hash out some of these questions uh, and also externally with extension agents. Um, we definitely need to do sort of this tool demonstration with a group of farmers um, at least once, probably more than once uh, to make sure, cause I mean, yeah, um, academic, I've been on a farm a handful of times. Uh, and so what I think works well, it doesn't really matter. Um, we, we really need to talk to some farmers and make sure that we're developing this tool in a way that, that works for them because they're not gonna use it otherwise. I'm just gonna interject briefly since I'm one of the extension people on the, on the project, um, Peng Lim and others of us. Um, so when she says external, uh, it's basically uh, other people in our group, Joe Zulovich, for example, at, at uh, Missouri and others in our state. Before we go to farmers, we really want input from folks like you. So <clears throat> um, I, I've done that before. Go to farmers too quickly, producers too quickly. And so we need that input. Any other questions? Do you have uh, inputs included about the incentives that uh, farmers will receive from the California Air Services uh, board program and everything included in the decision making? So the question is about incentives uh, like carbon credits and things like that. Um, for the economics, we do. Uh, of course, those are um, ever changing. We do have a, um, a variable for that where through literature review and, and searching, I've got like a value per unit of carbon. Um, emissions reductions. So it's, it's really quite challenging because uh, some of those um, incentives are based on reduction. So it's based on what they're currently emitting. And uh, there's a lot of assumptions that we have to make in the tool in order to, you know, choose the value that we're subtracting from. Um, but Varma's, uh, you know, calculated those emissions. And so we have a mechanism to estimate those reductions and we've got, you know, values that we can, um, you know, use as multipliers. So we do have a way to evaluate that. The question is, where are you getting the cost data economic value for all of these factors? Through, uh, I'll be short, but you can definitely, you know, reach out to me via email um, and I'll be happy to have more in-depth conversations. But uh, through literature view, published, um, you know, published literature, uh, NRCS, you know, payment schedules, things like that, and vendor surveys have been helpful. Um, yeah, we've got the energy, oh gosh, I can't, I'm not going to remember the words, but the EIA uh, for, you know, different energy costs, um, Bureau of Labor for labor costs, and these are all um, personally by state. So that is uh, 
I guess as far as I'll go answering that question right now. The question is, how will we update some of our parameters in the tool over time? That's a good question. Uh, so, you know, we've got a couple more years on this project, so we'll, we'll be able to update, you know, directly during that time period. And we have acknowledged that we need to figure out how we're going to allow updates um, into the future. Uh, you know, when uh, hopefully I'm off getting paid more for a different job. Um, but uh, I mean, it's really hard to do. As we all know, inflation is volatile and changes um, dramatically. And so that that is a good question. And we we acknowledge it, but we haven't we haven't really uh, figured out how we're going to do that yet. All right. Thank you.